Hey everybody and welcome to day 5 of 100 days of creating a character where I take at least 30 minutes a day to work on an animation clip from start to finish. Today I jumped into ZBrush and started with blocking out the character in 3D and I recorded the whole process and did a step-by-step -step overview of what I'm doing but the editing process took quite a while so I'm not sure if I can do that for everything that I'm doing in the future but if you have any questions please write them in the comments and I will do my best to, to answer them. What you can see right now is the, the screen you see from ZBrush when you first open, open the program and on the project you can see the DinoX 128 open that and this is the setup I usually start with and when you go when you go up here you can see that I have the concept open behind behind ZBrush and with this slider I can determine how transparent the, the canvas is going to be yeah let's get started I like to use the fear as as the head in the beginning so I, I don't scale the sphere I just uh, zoom out so it matches the face as close as possible and then it's all about just matching matching the silhouette of the concept and you can see here that the topology is stretched quite a bit but since it's the default dynawax sphere um, i just have to hold hold down the, the control key and mask outside of the mesh, so it, the, the sphere gets remeshed. To make things a bit easier, you can go under under document and there you can see Z Appling properties and just click on the front button and this will save you the, the current view. So when I change the, the view, for example, um, let's say I I would work a bit on the side view and I want to get back to the overlaying of the silhouette. You can just go to document, click on front and then I will be back at the saved view. So let's turn the transparency off and you see when I smooth the surface it takes quite a while to, to smooth things down. So I like to go under uh, Dynamesh and turn down the resolution to, let's say, 64. And this way you can see the difference. The, the mesh is not that dense anymore and the smoothing is a bit faster. Next I want to add the, the neck and for that I use the insert cylinder and place it at the back of the head. So for the body I will use the insert sphere brush and I will attach it to, to the bottom of the neck. You can see right now that the, the maximum size of the brush is at, at a thousand but it's still quite small and that's because the dynamic brush size is turned on. And when I hold down the shift key and click on dynamic it gets uh, turned off. So now I can size up my brush quite a lot more. Now I will use the move topological brush. When you click with the brush on the surface, it tries to um, do a soft selection along the surface, so anything that is not attached to, to the points that you click on will not get affected, which comes, comes in pretty handy when you work with uh, multiple subtools that are separate, separate meshes, like in this case. You see I just dynamesh the whole thing and it actually merged all the primitives and that is not something I want. What I want is to keep the separate meshes 
so I will click the group group button here and this way when I dynamish it it makes all the polygroups a separate mesh. For the arms I like to use the curved tube brush and it's just creating a cylinder around the curve that I draw and with the brush size I can determine the, the width of the of the tube. To confirm the stroke I just have to click on the mesh. I use the same technique with the legs as well. If you want to you can change the the stroke in the stroke menu and go to curve modifiers and turn on the size so you can determine the the width of the of the curve along the stroke. So maybe something like that. You can see that the legs are a bit too short, so I'm going to scale them up. Now it looks much better. For the hands, um, I like to use the insert sphere brush as well, together with the clip curve brush. And you can access the clip curve brush when you hold down the control and shift key and go here to the top left and click on the brush and here you can see the, the different uh, curve brushes. For this one I will use the clip curve. So now that this is in place I will start with doing just one finger and for that I I went to the subtool menu and inserted a cube primitive. You can see it's pretty re low resolution, so and it has some some weird topology at the top of the of the cube. So I will do a quick dynamesh on that one. For that, I'm going to set the resolution pretty low. And now I'm trying to sculpt a single finger. Now that the finger is finished, I'm going to turn off symmetry, scale it down quite a bit, and place it around the, the palm of the hand. When you have the transpose line activated and you go to, to the move function and hold down the control key, by clicking in the middle of the, of the line you can duplicate the, the model as a polygroup. So now that the fingers are finished, I can mirror them to the, the left side of the character. And for that I go to Geometry and then click Mirror and Weld. And mirror and Weld only functions from the right side to the left side. So when you get the, the message that the resulting 3D mesh does not contain any polygons, you just have to go to 
deformation tab and then mirror on the X axis. Go back to geometry and then click mirror and weld. And this way you, you have the fingers on both sides. So you can see that the proportions seem seem about correct and and the next step is going to be blocking out the, the face and adding blockouts of the of the clothes and refining the anatomy a bit more. I think that's about it for today. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any suggestions on what to improve in these videos, uh, let me know in the comments and I will see you tomorrow.